Today, I'm speaking with uh, Matt Schwab, who is the CEO of Kraken Energy. Is, did I pronounce that correctly? Is it Kraken? You or sure Kraken? did. Kraken okay. Energy, yeah. Great. And uh, you're, you're a uranium junior, yes? Yes, we are. <laughs> okay. And you, you've, got a, you've got a discovery uh, or, or perhaps a, a reopening of, of a mine property in the U.S. that you'd like to tell us about, correct? Absolutely. Our new acquisition okay. of Hearts Point in Utah. Okay. And can I can I ask you, since you're you're based in Saskatoon, right? I sure am. Okay. And as far as I know, Saskatchewan is perhaps the center of the North American uranium industry. So can you tell us why you've journeyed down to Utah, where you expose yourself to the, uh, uh, the equivalent of First Nations scrutiny? Uh, federal American land ownership, state ownership, regulation of the Yazoo, and oh, and by the way, at the end of all of that, maybe producing uranium. Thanks, Jack. That's a, it's a very open-ended question. Uh, there's a lot of aspects to that for sure. Uh, I'll start off with, um, there's, there's definitely sociopolitical issues or risks, no matter what jurisdiction you're in. We see a lot of the same things in Saskatchewan. Um, it's never ending. You always have to consider stakeholders, right? Uh, you don't want to step on toes and you have to proceed properly as you go through these exploration and development processes. So I'm not worried about that uh, portion in moving from uh, Saskatchewan to focusing our efforts down in the United States. As far as our, our decision to move to a different jurisdiction, Yes, our team has a lot of uh, success and experience in the Athabasca Basin in Saskatchewan um, between NextGen and Patterson Lake South, uh, Rough Rider. We, we've kind of covered the basin and, and a lot of people ask this question, but to me, it comes down to a, a matter of realism. And, and in my, my mind, almost a point of pride, I would like to see something that we discover or we develop actually produce in our lifetime. And, and that's not me being... Um, uh, negative towards the Athabasca base and just being realistic in that the timeline for development of properties, uh, you know, or projects that have mineralization down to a kilometer or more takes more infrastructure, takes more time, takes more money, plain and simple. So looking at the opportunities of mineralization and, and deposit styles in the United States, focusing in Nevada was our first, pro our first priority, looking at near or at surface mineralization on past producing assets. So we also jump right into the brownfield stage where we're not looking to make a new discovery. We're looking to go back and exploit a resource that was in place and taken out of production before it met its prime. And the reasoning for that is because the incentives were taken away at the end of the 1950s by the US government. So all the focus for uranium mining shifted away from that to the more profitable jurisdiction of, at that time, the Athabasca Basin. So now we're, we're sitting in this nice situation where we can go back and take a look at all these properties and all these deposits that were forgotten for the last 60, 70 years and move them forward in a quicker fashion than we could do probably anywhere else. I, I think you're doing exactly the right thing. Don't, don't get me wrong. Um, and, and I think that the real issue in the United States is that the American public is not aware of the fact that we produce almost nothing in the way of uranium relative to our demand. Uh, the U.S. has about 25% of the world's civilian power reactors, and yet we only produce one or two percent of our of the, domestically of the uranium. So while we all listen to uh, politicians bloviating about how we're so dependent on China, they seem to have ignored the fact that we're so dependent on Kazakhstan for ore, Russia for uh, processed uh, uranium uh, fuel, and uh, of course our friends in Canada for for the balance of what we need. So I think that you're young enough to to hold on, and that America is going to wake up to the fact that we must produce as much uranium as possible. And I think that the in the last few months or last year or so, you've seen Congress vote money for an inventory of, of uranium. And that that has really propped up our our one or two producers in the U.S. But in the long run, we need companies like yours desperately. And and you're right. Um, just go back to the it used to be 
when I was a kid, the land office and look at the dusty records and find, you know, the old gold mines and all that. And now you go and look at, at, at people's records and find the old uranium mines. So congratulations and please keep us informed as to what you're doing, because this is really critical for the future of the United States. Certainly, I agree with you 100%, and I'd be happy to update you as we keep moving along. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Jack.